Hello. Welcome to the Static Equipment Design Course, Module 4. In this module, you'll get an overview of the ASME, BPVC that is Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code, Section 2 Part A, which covers various aspects of the materials used in the construction of pressure vessels. Now, let us go through the historical background. In 1916, the ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers appointed, a subcommittee, to study and confer with, the ASTM the American Society for Testing and Materials. As a result, in the 1918 edition of ASME, specifications, were nearly in agreement with ASTM. There were few materials in ASME for which ASTM had no corresponding material specification. These material specifications got adopted by ASTM. So, it was like a give and take situation and we got two material standards, ASTM and ASME. There were few materials in ASME for which ASTM had no corresponding material specification. These material specifications got adopted by ASTM. So, it was like a give and take situation and we got two material standards, ASTM and ASME. A material specification in ASTM standard starts with the letter A, while that of the ASME starts with the letters SA. The ASME, BPVC Section 2, has been divided into four parts. Part A, for ferrous material specifications. Part B, for non-ferrous material specifications. Part C, specification for welding rods, electrodes, and filler metals. Part D, for properties of materials. As, in the pressure vessel industry, we deal with mainly ferrous materials, so mainly, we need to refer to Part A. Part A, Part B, and Part C cover the specifications of materials like their chemical composition and ordering information. Part D covers their physical properties like tensile strength, yield strength, allowable stress, modulus of elasticity, and thermal expansion coefficient. Part A, Part B, and Part C generally help in material selection and procurement. Part D is most useful in the design process. As the pressure vessel industry mainly deals with a ferrous material, our focus in this module will be on Part A. The goal of studying Part A will be to learn how to read a typical specification of material you'll be exposed to different parts of a typical specification like scope of usage, general requirements, ordering information, specifics related to manufacturing and testing, and chemical composition. We'll look at a commonly used material specification, SA 516, and go through the specification of it and see what all we are able to get. Once you know how to read this specification, you'll be able to read the others by yourself. In Part D, we'll learn about which stress tables to refer to for applicable code, how to see the applicable temperature limit for material, how to find UNS number, P numbers, and applicable external pressure charts. We'll also learn to find maximum allowable stresses, which is the most important part of thickness calculation. You'll be also exposed to physical properties tables which cover thermal expansion, thermal conductivity, thermal diffusivity, and modulus of elasticity. You'll also get a brief overview of 
charts and tables, which are useful for thickness calculations, for external pressure. These will cover in greater detail in the module, on Section 8, Division 1. Now, let's move to the first objective, understanding a material specifications. We are in Section 2 Part A, Material Specification for Ferrous Materials, and we are going to see the specification for most commonly, carbon steel plate material we use, SA 516. Section 2, Part A is divided into two parts due to a large number of materials. The first part contains material up to SA 450, and the rest of it is in second part. As we want to refer to, SA 516, we need to open the second part. It is recommended that you open the second part of code ASME section 2 part A, and, go to the SA 516, while you are watching the module. Hope you have the code opened in front of you. When you open a typical title of SA 516 it gives specifications, to be used for pressure vessel plates, made of the material carbon steel, and to be used for moderate and low temperature services. Now, as we see a typical title of a specification, it indicates the type of product form, general material name, application, and applicability. So much information in just the title of the specification. Isn't it great? Hope you got all that. In this specification of SA 516 and SA 516M, the M stands for metric while SA 516 stands for imperial. So, this specification is available in imperial as well as metric units. The temperature limits including what we mean by moderate and low temperatures is covered in section 2, part D. What else we are going to find in this specification? We will find about the scope of usage of this specification. Applicable general specification. Every material refers to a general specification which refers to lots of general requirements. Ordering information required. Specifics about the steelmaking practice. Types of heat treatment recommended. And details of the material's chemical composition and tensile testing requirements. Now, let's take a closer look at each of these. The key point mentioned in the scope is that SA 516 covers the use of carbon steel plates for welded pressure vessels where improved notch toughness is needed, which means better impact property is required. Okay, so lots of information in a single statement. Let us rerun through it again as this is very important for you to remember. SA 516 is a material specification used for welded pressure vessel made of carbon steel plates where we need higher notch toughness, which means we need higher impact properties. It is available in four grades, grade 55, grade 60, grade 65, and grade 70. The table also shows the corresponding tensile strength and maximum plate thickness. Grades are very important here. Grade 70 indicates the minimum tensile strength in KSI, so grade 70 means the steel will have a minimum tensile strength of 70 KSI. The same is applicable for metrics 2. Grade 485 means the steel will have a minimum tensile strength of 485 megapascals. Great isn't it? Remember, it's minimum value of tensile strength, so mills have to produce steel with higher tensile strength than this to get it qualified. Thickness indicates the maximum plate thickness permitted under this specification. Such as for grade 70 the maximum thickness you can produce is 205 mm.
Clause 3. Gives the general requirements and ordering information. As per this clause, SA 516 needs to conform to the general specification, SA 20 for these requirements. We need to refer to SA 20 and it will give us the procedures for testing and retesting. Permissible variations in dimensions and mass. Quality and repair of defects, marking, loading, etc. Once you start using Section 2 regularly, you'll notice that specifications in this section often refer to some other general specification elsewhere where general requirements are outlined. The general specification covers general requirements and may be applicable to lots of specifications. Like SA-20, apart from SA-516, covers general requirements for SA-203, SA-204, SA-387, and many more. Hope it is making sense to you. Clause 4. Covers the steelmaking practice. It includes a very important point, that the plate manufactured under the SA 516 specification, needs to be killed. In steelmaking, killing, refers to the procedure where free oxygen is removed from the material. Please note this point and try to memorize it. SA 516 plate needs to be killed. The second very important point is that plate should conform to the fine austenitic grain size requirement of the specification SA-20. Fine grain size means the grain size shall be 5 or more as determined by SA-20. Now, coming to Clause 5, which talks about very important requirements. It is about heat treatment condition of plate, based on thickness. Now please note that, we are talking about heat treatment at the plate stage, which is done by the mills, before supplying the plate to us for fabrication. Different types of heat treatments are recommended, based on the thickness of the plates. Plates, that are of 40 mm thickness and under, do not require any heat treatment, therefore they can be supplied in, as rolled condition. Plates, over 40 mm, shall be normalized. Now, if impact testing is required, normalizing of plates does not depend upon the thickness of the plate. All the thicknesses need to be normalized. That brings down a very important point that, normalizing improves notch toughness, and hence, you get better impact testing property of material. That means normalized plate, will perform better in impact testing. Please remember, SA 516 grade 70 plates, more than 40 mm in thickness, shall be supplied in the normalized condition. Table 1 shows the requirements of the chemical composition of SA 516. It indicates what's the maximum percentage of an element in different grades. Under elements, if you see the most noticeable element is carbon. Specification indicates the maximum percentage of carbon in different grades and if we move from grade 55 to grade 70, the percentage of carbon increases. As we know, increasing carbon percentage means increased strength, so, it explains the higher tensile strength of grade 70 than grade 55. If you notice carefully, the carbon percentage requirement is also dependent on thickness. For increasing thickness, the maximum permitted percentage of carbon also increases. Other elements included in the SA 516 are manganese, phosphorus, sulfur, and silicon. The table also shows the percentages of these elements for heat analysis and product analysis. The point to understand here is that chemical analysis can be performed at different stages and it may also vary a little bit. Heat analysis is the analysis of the chemical components while the material is in molten condition before it is formed into a plate. Product analysis is done after the plate is formed. Point to remember, for grade 70, the percentage of carbon varies from 0.27% to 0.31%.
tensile testing requirements are covered in Table 2, which gives tensile strength, yield strength, and percent elongation. All material produced as per this specification shall meet these requirements. Point to remember. For grade 70, the minimum tensile strength required is 485 megapascals and the minimum yield strength is 260 megapascals. We can also request additional testing of material from mill, such as sharp PV notch impact test, simulated PWHT coupons, ultrasonic examinations, and many more. Each additional requirement given to mills means additional cost. Okay, so, we have seen a typical material specification. Other material specifications also follow a similar format. Now, are you thinking about, why the specification is required for material procurement? The answer to that is, standardization. Standardization ensures, that by simply knowing the specification number, a mill can produce these materials and we don't require to give them detailed material specification requirements for the purchase of material. Hope it is making sense now. Let's quickly summarize what we've learned so far. Section 2 is divided into four parts. Part A, for ferrous material specification. Part B, for non-ferrous material specification. Part C, for welding rods, wire specification. Part D, for physical properties of the material. Then, we went to section 2, part A which is further divided into two segments, start to SA 450, SA 450 to end. Then, we saw, what a typical material specification of Section 2, Part A looks like, we took SA 516 as an example and noted the following. Description of specification gives lots of information. Such as, it is for plates, it is giving product form, carbon steel, its material name, for moderate and lower temperature service, applicability of the material temperature wise. Plates as per SA 516 shall be killed and shall conform to the fine austenitic grain size. The general specification for SA 516 is SA 20. Plates over 40 mm in thickness shall be supplied in normalized condition. For grade 70, the percentage of carbon varies from 0.27% to 0.31%. Tensile strength of GR 70. Yield Please remember, the impact strength of material reduces with an increase in thickness. The maximum permitted percentage of element increases with increasing thickness. Max thickness of GR70 plate is 205 millimeters.